and go into the locker room at halftime and have the team come up completely prepared in a whole new way. Or maybe they come from a big deficit and they end up winning the game. It seems to me, though, that I often tend to choose the teams that are opposite to that. Uh, when I was growing up, and maybe it was just the way that it was at the time, that I, but I was an Iowa Hawkeyes basketball fan. And they were a really good team, but they were a team that instead of making adjustments to get better, they ended up starting well, getting big leads, and then going into their delay game and losing the game at the end. And that's in like every game, that's what they did. They lose a 20 point lead. And it's not very fun to watch that. Those kinds of teams don't impress me. The ones that make the adjustments to get better impress me. So what does that have to do with our reading for today? Well, today I want to focus on the reading of uh, the letter to Timothy um, that Paul writes. That Timothy is basically, here's the image I'm building upon, is that whole sports team. That Timothy is one of Paul's first five-star recruits. He's someone, as Paul went around and he did his ministry, he ended up recognizing the gifts in other people and inviting them to join his team. And Timothy was someone who grew up in a family, his mother, his grandmother, were strong in their faith, and they planted a good, solid faith in Timothy. And so Paul saw something in Timothy when he went there. But not only did he see it, but there were people that came up to him, other scouts that recognized in Timothy the talent, that he was a five-star guy. He was someone that he wanted to have on his team. So it says in Acts 16, 12, that he wanted to take Timothy along with him on his journey because the brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. They saw potential. They saw talent. So he was this five-star recruit for Paul's missionary team that started well, but it seemed like it didn't take very long, or at least by the time Paul writes this letter, this five-star recruit had lost a lot of his confidence. He's starting to go into just self-preservation mode and not doing the ministry that he has the potential to do. So Paul, being that good coach, doesn't want Timothy to end poorly. He wants Timothy to end well. So he ends up having a good halftime talk through this letter with Timothy, saying, don't give up. And he shares four things, or probably shares more than four things, but four that I want to talk about today that he uses to encourage Timothy to, to not remove himself from the game of ministry, but to stay engaged. And the four things I'm going to talk about, and maybe this is just for Timothy, but maybe you'll overhear something that you need to hear in your own faith walk today. The first is remember who you are. The second is remember what's been invested in you. The third is remember that you have the ball, sticking with our sports picture. And remember that there's one on your team who will never let you down. So the first, remember who you are. That when Paul traveled to Lystra, he saw this young man of great potential that came from a family that invested a lot in him, that he had the respect of the other people from not only his town, but he had the respect of people from neighboring towns and said, Timothy's the guy that you want. Remember all the gifts that you have and start focusing on all the things that you have to offer and not on what you feel like you don't have to offer. That's why I chose you, Paul, or I chose you, Timothy, Paul says. I chose you because I saw gifts in you. But I didn't just leave you with the gifts that you had at the beginning. Number two, remember what's been invested in you. Not only did you have that raw faith, but the whole team, we, we prayed over you, we laid hands on you, we blessed you. We spoke <coughs> prophetic words into your life to bring out the potential in you. And God has invested His Holy Spirit in you. And His Spirit is not a spirit of cowardice or fear that causes you to want to give up. But His Spirit is the kind of spirit that it gives you love and courage, that gives you power even when you feel weak. So Timothy, remember what's been invested in you. That when people speak in ways that tear you down, don't focus on what they're saying to you, but focus on how God's causing you to see them. So you've been given not a spirit of cowardice or a spirit that will cause you to give up, but you've been given a spirit that causes you to define your actions by love and not by self-preservation. 
So when you're doing ministry, don't just think about how someone else is maybe not appreciating you, but focus on the fact that you love them. And if you're focusing on that love, then you're going to keep on staying in the game. You're going to keep on remembering who you are. But if all you do is focus on the things that discourage you, then you're just going to turn in upon yourself and you're going to end up losing the effectiveness that, you're, that I've created you to have. Remember that it's not your strength that will accomplish the ministry. But remember you've been given a spirit of power, a spirit that uses, even in the midst of your weakness, God can do amazing things. That God can bring healing to people. God can bring healing to relationships. God can bring hope to people, even when you don't realize that you're doing very much. So remember what's been invested in you. Remember who you are. Remember what's been invested. And then remember that you have the ball. And I think that's part of you. You've been given the spirit of power and love. Not the spirit that causes you to go into a delay game and just try to hold on to that what you have. I think many times we have this picture of Christianity that we were that the cross just gave us enough of a lead that we just need to hold on to it and not lose it sometime before we die. Now somebody else has that picture. We just gotta go into prevent mode so that we don't make huge mistakes and allow Satan to defeat us. But we're not on defense. That when Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, that's not a defensive picture. It's, it's not that hell is attacking us and we just need to hold on by the skin of our teeth. But it's, we're doing the attacking. And Satan's gates cannot stand against us if we are who God called us to be in the world. So how do we have the power to threaten Satan. We have a spirit of love. We have a spirit of power. When we choose to love people, even when they don't deserve it, we are attacking Satan in powerful ways where he cannot stand. When we trust that God's power through us can do things that are bigger than us, when we take the risk of going places that maybe we feel like we might not be qualified to go to, when we go out and love someone that's difficult to love, we're attacking the gates of hell, and they will not stand in front of us. So the picture that I want to have us think about is, when you picture your faith, are you just in defense mode, just trying to avoid losing your salvation by the time you die? Or are you actually remembering that because of Christ, because of the Spirit, we actually have the ball? That we're called to make a difference, to extend the kingdom? to destroy the works of the devil, to bring hope to people, to bring life to people. I think as long as we remember, just like those teams that, for, that go into stall mode, and their offense just falls apart, and they lose all their rhythm, and they sort of forget who they are, I think sometimes as Christians, if all we're doing is just trying to self-preservation mode, we're going to discover that we lose our rhythm, we're going to lose our sense of who we are. And in the process, we're going to end up losing that sense of God's presence and God's activity. So, basically, Paul is saying, you have the ball, Timothy. Don't pretend you're just trying to defend yourself and save yourself. But you're going to discover who you are as you actually go out there on the field, and you go out there and, and run some plays, and allow God to lead you places uh, where you might be afraid to go. So, number four. So, first, remember who you are, remember what's been invested in you. Remember you have the ball. And finally, remember who's on your team. And Paul is going to say, I've discovered that when I take risks, I've discovered that when I allow God to lead me into places, that I get to know things about Jesus and his power, even in the midst of my weakness, that I never would have known if I would have just sat on the sideline afraid. So what I've discovered is in my life, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to lean into him. I'm going to give everything. I'm going to go places that maybe I don't feel qualified to go if that's where he leads me. Because what I've discovered is that he always comes through. That he's always there. And I've come to the point where I know for certain that he's not going to let me down. And I'm going to keep on pressing into him. So Timothy, I want to encourage you to do the same thing. That if you're going to get to know things about Jesus by going out on the field and taking risks that you never would have gotten to know about him 
if you just stay on the sideline and try to keep yourself safe. That, that's much of the Christian life. That we're meant not to just play it safe and then get to meet Jesus when we die. But we get to meet him as we go out on the field and we go where he leads and we love people the way that he calls us to love people and we take risks the way that he calls us to take risks. Then we're getting to know him every step of the way. So then when we die, we're not just saying, I sure hope I haven't lost whatever points I had so that I lose my ability to go to heaven. But when we die, we're saying, I don't need to meet Jesus. I've already met him. Now I'm just going to get to see him more clearly. Because I've been experiencing him every step of the way. As I remember who I am. As I remember what he's invested in me. As I remember that I have the ball and that I'm with him, and that I'm doing things to expand his kingdom. And I've gotten to know him to the extent where I'm not questioning whether I'm going to that next place. I'm just looking forward to the time when I'm going to have all the barriers removed, and I get to see face to face this one who has been with me every step of the way. So I don't know about you, but maybe if you need to be reminded who you are, God chose you as a five-star recruit before you were even born. You don't know what gifts you have. He's invested the Holy Spirit in you. Not a spirit of cowardliness, but a spirit of love and power. He's not just hoping that you avoid losing the game, but he's given you the ball to go out and make a difference in the world. And he says, the way you're going to get to know me is by taking the risk of loving people, taking the risk of using the gifts you have. So maybe you need to have that pep talk in your life that maybe you started well and you're in the process of just ho trying to hold on. But the point of coming to church is not to say that you never make mistakes. But the point is that we keep on stirring each other up so that we finish better than we began. Amen.